Over the past few decades, scientists have been working to reduce our reliability on fossil fuels in order to decrease the emission of greenhouse gases. Of course, solar and wind energy can be useful for this purpose. Now scientists at the University of Massachusetts are working on revolutionizing our power sources by developing technology to utilize energy directly from thin air. Stick with us to know all the major details. In the First, scientists are working on green technology. Most of us believe that solar power is the most effective and environmentally friendly energy source there is. No doubt, it is. If we look at some negatives, solar farms require a large amount of land and earth metals. When it comes to wind energy, it definitely has a lower carbon footprint. But just like solar, it needs to be stored in batteries made from lithium and lead. As for nuclear power, it has the lowest carbon footprint, but the impending risk factor of another Chernobyl is hard to stomach. We're not denying that all of these options are a great improvement over coal power. There's still a lot of pressure to create an energy source that's cheap and 100% green. So the scientists at the University of Massachusetts took to the challenge and presented a low-cost device called AirGen, which generates power from thin air. Yes, you heard that right. In fact, it can produce enough energy to charge devices like electric cars and cell phones. The best thing is, it doesn't require harmful chemicals to produce. The whole process is 100% green. This new technology can have a huge impact on the utilization of renewables in the future, as well as climate change and even in the medical field. We know it may be hard to believe at first, but the device is really based on a natural phenomenon. Scientists have said that the moisture naturally suspended in the air is the major force behind the power generating ability of this device. Believe us, the whole process is green. Just think of high school physics. You can recall the electricity is actually the flow of electrons, the negatively charged particles that revolve around atoms. And the fact that water is a good source of these charged particles if we split it into its building blocks that are oxygen and hydrogen. The team has stated that when a tangled mass of nanowires is squeezed into a mesh-like film, moisture particles suspended in the air gather on the top of it and split into hydrogen and oxygen, freeing up the water electrons. In this way, the top of the film gets a higher charge than the bottom, and so perfect conditions are established for the electrons to flow. So when the scientists pressed these films between two gold electrodes to form a circuit, this resulted in the tiny device producing a voltage of 0.5 volts from just a 7 micrometer thick film. In comparison, a fully charged car battery produces 12.6 volts. See how impressive the idea is? In this way, AirGen can produce a constant electron flow without much input, thanks to the incredible biology of Geobacter's nanowires. The scientists have compared these wires to human hair. Both are made of threads of different proteins, but these wires are 20,000 times thinner than what you'd pluck out from your scalp. Well, before we slap the patches of their wires onto our phones, their production needs to be increased so that multiple patches can work together to generate enough power for charging our modern devices. But how can they achieve this? Electrical engineering professor Jun Yao has said that they're figuring out clever engineering strategies for it to happen. Interestingly, they've already figured out a way to increase the production. The best news is the scientists have already been working on tackling the issue of mass production and it seems they've been successful so far. How so? They plan on cutting the Geobacter out of the picture. The reason? If you don't know, Geobacters have a slow rate of multiplication. Therefore, it's really not easy to form large amounts of wires from Geobacter. For this purpose, they've developed a strain of E. coli that form those Geobacter nanowires. If you can recall your high school biology, E. coli tends to grow quickly, and it's been the scientist's go-to source for genetic engineering due to this ability. In this way, scientists now have a ready supply of nanowires. But the major question still remains whether the technology is really 100% green as it seems to be. Yao remains that the production is completely harmless to the environment and definitely cheaper. It's because they feed the renewable source to the bacteria without any toxic chemicals involved. In fact, the cost of production would be 100 times cheaper than that required to make semiconductor-grade silicon 
used for the solar cells. From the nanowires to the way they're formed, everything is all green. Yao also pointed out that if you put the green label on a technology, most of the time it means that only the production part is green, and the process can still generate e-waste. But this isn't the case with AirGen. In fact, scientists are confident that there isn't any current technology that can rival AirGen. Yao also wrote in the article that charging large devices using AirGen would simply be a matter of connecting tiny generators. This is an improvement from using thousands of tiny cells to drive a Tesla car, despite the fact that each of the individual cells have limited energy. So as long as they can scale up their production, they can power medium-scale electric tools, small-scale wearables, and even a remote station. And they're pretty confident with their approach. Beside this, it can also generate power in areas that have the lowest humidity rates, such as the Sahara Desert, which only shows its extreme capability. Actually, it's the proteins that conduct electricity. Yes, they're producing electricity out of thin air, but we've only talked about how AirGen forms energy using only the air. Well, the nanowires have proteins that conduct electricity. They place the film between the electrodes and expose it to the air. The pores in the film absorb the moisture in the atmosphere. This creates a moisture gradient, which causes the ionization in the film. In this way, the electricity produced is pollution-free and relatively cheap. Therefore, AirGen doesn't need the applications of wind power or solar energy. Moreover, it works on the principle of inductive coupling. When an alternating current is passed through the primary coil, the alternating magnetic field produces an alternating voltage in the secondary coil. Wireless charging stations for smartphones and electric toothbrushes already employ this inductive coupling principle. Due to this, you can say that the technology will be really important for electric cars. Car batteries can be recharged while you're driving on the charging lane of a road with integrated coils or plates in the future, expanding the battery range to thousands of kilometers. However, the challenge for industrial applications and e-mobility is really greater than for small devices and RFIDs. When it comes to a smartphone battery, it can be easily charged up with 5 watts of power, but there needs to be 1,000 times more wireless energy available for electric vehicles. Mobile robots that can operate on their own, floor conveyors, and other industrial equipment. Such devices are still in their early stages. However, a team from the University of Colorado Boulder in the United States recently demonstrated a test setup that transfers one kilowatt over a distance of 12 centimeters. Actually, the researchers use capacitive coupling instead of inductive coupling, which involves energy transfer through a high-frequency electric field. Still, feasibility studies will be required in the future to check whether the principle can be improved and scaled to industrial applications. After all, industrial sectors not only need solutions for the reduction of energy loss, but also simplified designs and strong components that can withstand harsh manufacturing conditions as well as microcontrollers with incorporated intelligence for the optimization of the energy transfer. Finally, where does it stand in the future? In the current state, the technology is only being used on small-scale power units, but the scientists have been working on expanding the capabilities of green energy to the larger, more commercial scale in the future. Their current goal is to focus on the wearables that are used for health and fitness purposes, such as fitness trackers and smartwatches, which would completely eliminate the need of the traditional batteries. Besides this, the scientists are also focusing on introducing the AirGen technology to smartphones. Therefore, frequent charging won't really be required. Now, this is something that has us excited already. Yao also said that its introduction on the large-scale units is also on their agenda, and soon they'll figure out a way to help power the residential properties using this technology. He said that they plan on developing standalone power generators that'll supply the power off the grid. For that, they need to get to the industrial scale for the mass production of these wires. And we definitely see them getting possible sponsors for this purpose in the near future. There's no doubt that it'll make a major contribution towards sustainable energy production. That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on green energy applied in AirGen? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more amazing and exciting videos. See you in the next one.